Hello, and welcome to this talk. I'm Dr. Melissa Ozdal, the leader of the UCL Autonomous Shipping Project. And I'm Olivia Tolson, the project editor. Today, Olivia and I will be speaking with Professor Eric Rose of the University of Oslo. This will be the first of a series of interviews with experts in the fields of autonomous shipping and artificial intelligence. We're honoured to have Professor Eric Rosa here today as he has extensive experience in the area of maritime law and he has recently co-edited the book Autonomous Ships and the Law. After some introductory questions, we'll be focusing on the chapter that he contributed to the book. Eric, what first stimulated your interest in autonomous shipping? Well, first, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, it's, an, it's a very interesting topic to talk about. And uh, uh, well, I've always been interested in shipping and uh, maritime law since I started to, uh, to work at the Maritime Law Institute. And, in combination with technology, nothing is better than that. So I, I really love this uh, subject. So do you think autonomous shipping is the future? Well, uh, it's not for me to say, but uh, if I were a ship owner, I would think that, well, crewing expenses, uh, they are kind of high and uh, automation is, is a good thing. It's much more safe if the systems are developed and uh, and also most crew members would like to uh, be at home rather than months uh, away at uh, the sea and even if it's a remote controlled vessel they can go home at four o'clock uh, and have dinner with the family and uh, so so i i think uh, this is the future yes so why is the legal framework surrounding autonomous shipping so important? Well, uh, liability issues. It's, uh, it's very focused on faults of a person on board. And uh, when there are no persons on board, but there is still an accident, then perhaps one should uh, rethink that basis of liability. And um, in respect of other legislation, it's often drafted on the assumption that there is at least one person on board, a master. And uh, uh, when there isn't, one would certainly have to, to rethink uh, those uh, provisions. So could you explain to us why artificial intelligence is so important in the autonomous shipping context? Well. Of course, in a very, very simple situation, you could uh, uh, do some autonomous shipping with uh, almost mechanical devices, a cable ferry, for example. But uh, uh, in more complex situations, you would need to make decisions. There is, there is another ship approaching you, uh, should you go to, to port or starboard, etc. And that's what artificial intel intelligence is all about. It's about uh, making good decisions in a complex situation. So moving on to your chapter, your starting point in your chapter is that artificial intelligence may cause unexplainable accidents. Why is this? Well, first of all, um, humans may cause inexplainable accidents. I, I, I think uh, uh, that's, this is the human part of uh, autonomous uh, uh, shipping and artificial in intelligence. We don't really know why we commit errors. And uh, uh, certainly in, uh, in, uh, in a ship or a plane, it could happen that uh, the artificial intel intelligence systems make mistakes but uh, they are unexplainable afterwards and we can see that in several airplane accidents we don't really know why the system made the wrong decision and we just have to redesign the system because it's uh, too complex really to figure out what was going on 
But even if uh, artificial intelligence can cause some unexplainable accidents, does it not avoid costly human errors? Yes, it, it does avoid some human errors. The master falling asleep at the helm, etc., etc. But uh, to some extent, the um, uh, artificial intelligence system is designed, at least the framework for it, is designed by humans, and they can do mistakes. So it's uh, all human mistakes are not eliminated. And even if um, artificial intelligence, they do not fall asleep at the helm, uh, they can do similar mistakes. And uh, they are not always easy to, to, to predict. And they will, from an outsider, look very much uh, like uh, what you would call a human mistake. So unfortunately, artificial intelligence is in some respects too much similar to a human being. So uh, you think that there are some limits to what a machine can do? So, for for example, if a machine, do you think a machine is really capable of beating the experience of a master who has sailed for many years? Yes, um, I actually think so because a master can gather a lot of experience, but it's very difficult for a master to systematically gather a lot of experience and it's very difficult to process it and sort of draw the right conclusions in, in, in a pressed situation. An artificial intelligence system can collect experience not only of one master's li lifetime, but many masters, and it can process it and um, find the right decision. So. Uh, so the potential is to improve safety a lot. But on the other hand, the, something unexpected can happen and there's nothing in the database indicating what to do. I often use the example of a Martian turning up uh, around the ship. An artificial intelligence system may not uh, know what to do. It could be designed to, to stop if it doesn't know what um, the object is. But on the other hand, then it would stop very often. So it's not designed to do that. A master will understand that <clears throat> I got to do something here. And uh, he can be a little more creative than uh, an artificial intelligence system. Even if navigation could be safely left to AI, what happens when, for example, AI encounters ethical dilemmas? Is it appropriate to let AI make these kind of judgments? Uh, certainly not. Um, <laughs> sometimes I wonder, is it appropriate to, to, to let humans make those kind, kinds of uh, um, decisions? We can imagine you have a big ship and there, there are two small vessels in front of it. One is full of uh, uh, old age, age uh, pensionists, and one is full of uh, school children. And you have, or the ship uh, has discovered them too late, and you have to make a choice. Um, a human master would uh, perhaps uh, make uh, um, a calculated decision, um, thinking, well, if I run on the, the small vessel with the old people, uh, the number of life uh, years uh, lost would be smaller than if I run on the school children. But I think in most cases, uh, there will be no time for consideration. I, I think uh, an AI system would have to work in the same way if it... Uh, cannot make a decision on the rational ground on the things it does observe, well, then it must make a decision on, on, uh, on chance randomly. But uh, it's difficult to program uh, a system. If, for example, the parliament could uh, uh, make up its mind and say, well, we'll give priority to the school children here. Well, then it could be 
put into the system, no problem. But uh, I don't think we would do that uh, in the abstract. So that's the problem. So, so um, the AI system could resolve ethical dilemmas the same way as we do. But, uh, and they would even have more time to, to consider it because they, they don't need so much time. But um, in most cases, we don't really know how to resolve these ethical dilemmas. That's why they are ethical dilemmas. So should the legal framework perhaps demand the transparency of AI processes so that we can be sure of what's going on? That would be a good idea, and uh, in the European Parliament that has been suggested. But uh, I don't think people who propose that really know what's going on into a system like that. It's very, very complex. So one would use a lifetime or so to, to, uh, to, uh, to really check what the computer did. It's uh, layers and layers of uh, probability calculations. So even the explanation would be so difficult that we couldn't understand it. And that's how our brain works too. We can get a master after an accident to explain what happened. But well, first of all, he will explain what he wants people to think happened. And uh, also uh, he doesn't really know what was going on in his, uh, his brain. So in theory, Yes, in, as a matter of practicalities, it wouldn't be possible to get uh, artificial intelligence systems really to explain to us in an understandable way uh, how they work. Um, so do you think then that the proper quality assurance of AI systems would provide sufficient protection? Yes, uh, one, one could run these uh, systems on a number of situations. And uh, you don't have to try them out in practice. You can, could, uh, could run uh, this on a computer. But apparently, lawyers do not always know what is the correct action. My favorite example is um, the collision rules. You're supposed to make uh, an effort to avoid collision in, in a clear uh, way. What is that? And uh, a judge uh, would probably know that uh, in retrospect, but in advance. And that makes it very difficult for, for example, a classification society to determine whether uh, this um, AI system is up to standards, because we don't know really what the standards are. Another important and interesting and, and rather related issue is obviously the development risk defense. So under this defense, there's a rule that has been hotly debated in recent years. It's possible for a producer to avoid liability where the state um, of scientific and technical knowledge at the time the product was put into circulation was not such as to enable the detection, detection of defect. Do you think this defense will have any role to play in shaping the liability rules in uh, autonomous shipping? Well, if uh, the starting point is strict liability, that may be um, a good defense. On the other hand, one shouldn't um, let an autonomous vessel sail if one uh, were really sure uh, that no accidents would be, uh, be caused by it. So the state of the art is good enough if, if there is an accident. So I'm, I'm quite skeptical to that, that approach. But of course, uh, the jurisdictions having that defense, they, they nuance a little bit. So what are therefore the implications of these conclusions that you've reached in your chapter for liability law? Well, it couldn't be based on uh, errors made on board the vessel because there are no humans to make errors on board the vessel. It must uh, take into account shortcomings created when designing the system. And um, that, of course, could make uh, a claim against, for example, a shipbuilder. However, 
those claims would be time barred very fast. So we, we couldn't base ourselves on that. And I also think it's only right and fair that the ship owner setting the ship into operation and earning the profits from it should be liable. So some kind of uh, a stricter liability would, uh, would be necessary. On the other hand, there's no reason why a vessel which is autonomous should be liable in situations where a non-autonomous vessel would not be liable. So uh, I think um, the golden way in between here would be to sort of establish some sort of an enterprise liability mm -hmm. where the ship owner would be liable if the ship didn't uh, perform according to reasonable expectations. It's not very dissimilar, really, to vicarious liability, but uh, in principle, it's, it's quite different. Just to pull there, whose reasonable expectations are you referring there, Eric? The reasonable expectation of the ship owner or the reasonable expectation of the cargo interest? Do you think there is an answer to that yet? Yes, I, I, I mean, very similar to, uh, to perhaps the product liability expectations. Uh, so so we, we have to see this from the victim's uh, perspective. I, I think the rule of the thumb should be that uh, would we have accepted this as a non-negligence act had it been a master on board? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if, if we hadn't, well, then, then of course, the, uh, the ship owner uh, should be liable for the ship not having uh, performed according to expectations. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Eric, for this very interesting interview. Thank you. We very much look forward to your future works in autonomous shipping and artificial intelligence. And we'll definitely read the book uh, Autonomous Ships and the World. Thank you so much for your time, Eric. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for having me.